Good news, bad news, I'm the last speaker, but I'm also a dietitian here to talk about staying healthy. So yes, my name is Jory Stuckwish. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. And I'm here to talk about how to help create a healthy workplace within the game development industry, which definitely poses some challenges. And right, I'm not just a dietitian. I have a husband who works in the game industry. So it's a relevant topic for me. <laughs> OK. All right, so our objectives, we're going to discuss what are the challenges of staying healthy in the game industry, and uh, why is that important? What are some strategies you as employees can use to try to stay healthy in this environment? And what are some things your employers can do to facilitate a healthy workplace? So challenges in your industry of staying healthy, um, sedentary job duties. Yes, you remember the South Park where they all started playing video games all day and they got really heavy. Um, so most of you probably are sitting in front of a computer screen for the vast majority of your, your job duties. And not only that, but you have extended work days where you're work, working more than eight hours. And then you have what I'm told are called focus weeks, where you're working, it's your crunch time. You're working more than five days a week and more than eight hours per day. So it makes it really hard to stay active during those times. The other big challenge, of course, is eating well at work. So things like snacking, eating out, drinking sugar-sweetened beverages, and any food that might be provided by your employers are all things that might be issues. All right. So why is it important to have a healthy workplace? Of course, you have those health risks to the employees that are associated with that sedentary lifestyle and poor eating habits, which can lead to obesity. It's going to cost employers to have those obesity-related conditions. And there's also benefits to employers to have a healthy workforce. So the health risks, obesity, we know it increases the risk for developing diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and kills about 300,000 people, Americans, per year. And Beyond just the overweight issue, if you're even for individuals who aren't overweight but they have a sedentary lifestyle and they don't have good eating habits, this is something that still is going to increase the risk for these health problems. So it's not a weight issue, it's really an overall health issue. I'm short, so I have to keep adjusting this. All right, so some statistics for employers. Total cost of obesity to US companies is estimated at uh, 13 billion per year. And then each obese individual is gonna have higher healthcare utilization rates. rates. So it is beneficial for, those, <laughs> for your employers to keep you healthy. Uh, improvements of the health, productivity, and morale of employees are going to be benefits to the employers. A study showed that 56% of companies reported increased morale among their workforce as a result of their fitness programs and other health initiatives. And the biggest thing is savings in health care costs. All right, so how can the employees overcome these challenges? First of all, addressing becoming more active. The minimum recommendation for activity is 30 minutes per day, at least five days per week, or 150 minutes per week. So remember that walking counts as exercise. Even if you're not doing some sort of a structured activity, walking is going to count. So that's something that's easily built into your daily routine, so keep that in mind. So how can you be more active at your sedentary job? Try walking or biking to work if possible. Otherwise, you can try walking or biking to lunch if you're going to go eat out. Walk during your lunch break. If you can sit at your desk and eat your lunch before your scheduled work or lunch hour, then do that. Then on your lunch break, go and walk for 30 minutes. That way, you've already built your exercise into your day. It's already done, so you've taken care of it. If that's not a possibility, try taking two 15-minute breaks twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Even if you're not doing continuous activity, uh, that 30 minutes all at one time, you can split it up. You can do 15 minutes twice a day, and that's still going to count towards your 30 minutes. You can also try forming a group with your coworkers where you do a fun activity, once a week at least, either during your lunch hour or after work, so you have that motivation of a group. 
Another strategy I like is using the tool of wearing a pedometer, which is going to tell you how many steps you take each day. So even if you're not doing a continuous activity each day, this is going to tell you how overall active you are. And you can set your goal of increasing your steps by 50 every day, and then your ultimate goal is reaching 10,000 steps each day, which is going to equal five miles. A good example of this is at the PAX event, the enforcers, a lot of them actually wear pedometers. So at the end of the day, they look at how many miles they walked just by doing their daily routine. So now addressing the eating well issue. Eating out is a big one uh, because if you're stuck at work, you're probably eating out more often, and it's really difficult to make healthy choices when you're eating out. So first of all, you want to limit how often you're eating out. Give yourself a specific weekly limit, like two days per week maximum. And then instead, plan ahead and bring a lunch from home. When you are eating out, try researching local restaurants that are going to offer you healthier selections. So some examples that are local are the Snap Kitchen, Muscle Maker Grill, Cafe and Garden. Those are some good ones. And you also have websites like CalorieKing.com where you can go and look up the nutritional information for different restaurants and fast food places. So you have that information right in front of you, and it's going to help you make better choices. Some more strategies, simple as eating breakfast. You don't want to set yourself up for failure by skipping breakfast. First of all, if you don't eat breakfast, you're going a long time before you finally do eat. So by the time you do, you're probably going to make poor food choices and you're going to eat a lot more. So you want to eat breakfast, and every day that you do eat breakfast, you're actually burning more calories. So start your day off right, even if that is cliche. And then avoid going longer than four to five hours between your meals, because if you're going too long, again, you're going to be too hungry, you're going to make poor food choices, you're going to eat more. So if you're going more than four to five hours between your meals, this is a great time to have a healthy snack. Um, so snacking is great, you just don't want to do it excessively. Really try to limit it to one structured snack between each meal and keep healthy snacks at your workplace, at your desk, so you have them available so you're not forced to make a less healthy choice and grab whatever's there. A little note on healthy snacks. You want to try to always combine a carbohydrate with a protein for your snack because that combination is really going to help fill you up and keep you full longer. So beverages is a really big issue um, associated with eating well. You want to, as much as you can, avoid sugar-sweetened drinks. So um, you don't have to hide the beer and the, the soda, but everything's okay in moderation. But during your regular work day, you want to stay away from that regular soda, Kool-Aid lemonade, all of that, energy drinks. And also limit juice to about four ounces per day. A lot of people don't realize juice uh, has about the same amount of calories and sugar that your sugar-sweetened drinks to. And those beverages, those calories really add up quickly. Unfortunately, our bodies don't get a sense of fullness from liquid calories, so it's very easy to drink hundreds of calories from these drinks and not feel full from it, but our bodies are still absorbing those calories. So they add up so fast. A good example, um, to give you an idea, is one can of soda is about 150 calories. Uh, if you were to take in 500 extra calories per day, you would gain one pound of weight per week. So three cans of regular soda per day can cause a nearly one pound weight gain per week. So that's really significant. So it just shows you how much just cutting out those sugar-sweetened drinks can make a huge difference in your calorie intake. Even just one can of this drink can really slow or prevent a weight loss if that's what you're working for. So it says enjoy slurm there, and um, what it should really say is enjoy diet slurm if that was an available product. Um, alternatives for your sugar-sweetened drinks are diet, so diet drinks, sugar-free drinks. So your diet soda, Crystal Light, all of those are fine. 
Water, of course, is best, but the sugar-free drinks are totally fine in moderation. They're calorie-free or nearly calorie-free, so they're a much better option. And make sure you are drinking water. Our bodies can misinterpret hunger as, or misinterpret thirst as hunger. So you may be thirsty, but you think you're hungry. So whenever you feel hungry, first grab some water and always drink water with your meals. The water is gonna take place in your stomach and maybe help you eat a little less with your meals. So just a note on focus weeks. Make sure you're continuing regular activity. Don't just take a month or two months off. Try to continue taking those 15 minute breaks every few hours to step away from your computers and take a walk. And wear that pedometer so you're still aware of your activity. Continue to limit eating out, especially if you're eating lunch and dinner at work. Bring your meals to work as much as you can. Like frozen entrees, like lean cuisine, those are really convenient. Keep those healthy ha snacks on hand and continue to avoid using those sugary and caffeinated drinks for energy. Keep drinking water and stay hydrated. So things your employers can do to help facilitate a healthy workplace. Uh, offering incentives like a discount on health care premiums. I personally know of people that um, this has been done at their workplace and it really worked. A financial incentive is always a huge motivator. Employers can also sponsor and subsidize gym memberships. Uh, try providing healthy food options and snacks in the break rooms and vending machines. If you're keeping on healthy foods for free at the workplace, your employees are going to eat them. So instead, make those healthy options available. And don't provide the sugar-sweetened beverages. Um, some more things they can do. Encourage employees to walk outside during their lunch hour and breaks and really allow employees to take those 15-minute breaks every few hours where they can step away from the computer and take a walk. Can offer incentives for walking or biking to work. I'm, I'm almost done. And uh, it's not only going to be healthy for your employees, it saves on parking. Try a company walk or bike ride on Friday afternoon so uh, all participants get a half day. It would be a really good motivator. And provide employee assistance programs for private counseling with a dietitian or community-based weight program. For individuals who have any additional dietary needs, you can consult a dietitian personally. Um, just always make sure wherever you're getting your nutrition information from, it's a reliable source. Dietitians are, are credentialed and regulated and licensed by the, the um, federally and state. Um, nutritionists is um, just a self-label. So if you're at a gym and someone's telling you to do this, that, and this, make sure they have the credentials to back up the information they're giving you and you're not doing something that isn't the healthiest thing for you. Um, so in conclusion, a healthy work environment benefits everyone. I'm sure we can all agree, Obama agrees. And uh, that's all. Thanks a lot, everybody.